Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. My name is Hannah and on my channel, I post anti-MLM videos and I also do Poshmark videos. So I have a reselling business on the Poshmark app. So I post a lot of tips and tricks videos for resellers as well. Recently, I've been posting a Poshmark video every Saturday and then I've been doing an anti-MLM video every Sunday. This week is a little bit different because I have a little bit more free time on my hands than usual. So I'm trying to use that time in the most productive way possible. And I'm trying to build up my channel and post a video every single day, Monday through Friday. And today's video is super fun because it's kind of like the perfect combination of both of these two things. We are going to be comparing and contrasting reselling, which for me means selling on the Poshmark app, to joining a multi-level marketing company, also known as MLMs. I was inspired to make this video because when I posted my very first MLM top fails video, somebody who subscribes to me for more Poshmark content was kind of like, I would love to see a video comparing and contrasting these two things. And at the time, I thought that that was a very interesting video request because truth be told, I have a really hard time seeing how the two things can be compared. But then like a week after I got that comment, I had like a little back and forth comment exchange with somebody on Instagram who is actually in an MLM and sells on Poshmark. I actually did not know that she was in an MLM at the time. I'm so dumb, I should have like, it's so obvious, all you have to do is look at the profile, right? But she had commented to me and said like, reselling and MLMs are essentially the exact same thing. And I just commented back and I said, as someone who makes both reselling content and anti-MLM content on YouTube, I don't see how they're the same thing. She actually immediately blocked me after I commented that and I felt so bad, like I felt like I offended her, I had no idea. Which is totally fine, you have the right to block whoever you want, I just feel bad. And I bring this up only to say that it really got me thinking like, no way. Like there's really people out there that think that joining an MLM and reselling are the same thing. It just blows my mind. So more than anything, I really just wanted to create this video to kind of like lay out all the facts, compare and contrast the two things, and just kind of have it be out there as a resource for anybody who maybe has their hand in both of these pies, or they're doing reselling and they want to join an MLM, or they're in an MLM and they want to do reselling, or they're trying to figure out what kind of like work from home business opportunity is the best for them. I am obviously pro reselling and anti MLM, so there is that kind of slant to it, but I'm going to try my absolute best to just be like neutral and level headed and just address it from like an objective point of view. Before we get too deep into it, I just wanted to give kind of like a little bit of a background on who I am and what my situation is right now. For the past two years, I've been going to school, I've been getting my master's in education. That was kind of functioning as my full-time job. Of course, there's like a 15 week student teaching portion. So I'm working 40 hours a week for free, basically. It took up a lot of my time, but I was starting to substitute teach. I was getting myself out there and then COVID hit. So in early 2020, I found Poshmark, I found reselling. I started doing that to bring in a little bit of extra money. About six months after I started my Poshmark business, I started a YouTube channel making videos videos for tips and tricks for other resellers. And then a year after that point, it brings us kind of to the present day where I'm still making videos, I'm still doing Poshmark, I'm still making reselling videos, but now I've kind of added in this anti-MLM thing too. It's a topic that I've been very passionate about for a long time, several years, but I've kind of finally just like bit the bullet and started making commentary videos on that as well. I recently graduated with my master's, but I also recently moved to a different state. And so I'm kind of in that awkward in-between phase right now of like trying to find a teaching job and also getting settled in this new place. So that's a little bit about me. I'm really passionate about education, kind of in all areas of my life. Like that's my professional career path. And I also love doing this and creating educational content for YouTube in both the anti-MLM and reselling worlds. So that's enough backstory. Let's jump into this video. We're going to be covering a whole bunch of different aspects of these two things and just comparing and contrasting them one by one. First, we're gonna compare like the motives and the reasons for wanting to start either of these businesses. We'll compare the startup costs, the products, how the money is made. And then towards the end of this video, I actually posted a poll and a couple questions boxes on my Instagram story, kind of asking people like what they thought about this whole reselling versus MLM thing. I got a ton of amazing responses that I would love to share with you. So we'll talk about that at the end when I give my final thoughts. So first and foremost, we have to talk about what is even the motive for starting either of these kinds of businesses? Why do people want to do this? I would have to say that the main motivation is money. For both reselling or joining an MLM, the motivation is wanting to have a little bit of extra cash on hand. Maybe that's like a side hustle kind of thing. You do this on the evenings and weekends or in your pockets of time. But in some cases, people will take this on as being their actual full-time job. In the context of reselling, this means that people are constantly thrifting, sourcing things, photographing them and listing them and shipping them off and selling them for a profit. That's the essential part of reselling, right? If you're joining an MLM, a big part of your job duties there have to do with like social media and building up a social media following and constantly be posting and promoting these products that you're selling. The focus is on selling the products that the business provides, but also a big emphasis on recruiting 
recruiting other people as well. I also see a ton of similarities in the motives for starting when it comes to like the whole be your own boss kind of thing, more time freedom thing, a sense of flexibility with like work-life balance. You can kind of do it from anywhere. A huge selling point as well is also this sense of control that you feel like you have over how successful you can be. In either case, you feel like you are in control of how much money you make and it's dependent on how hard you work. And this idea that how successful you are directly correlates to how much energy and effort you're putting into it. The whole thing of like uncapped earning potential, we hear that a lot in MLMs. The idea that you are in control of how much or how little you make. So I think in all of those ways, the motives are very similar. People just want more money, more time, more flexibility. Those are huge motives for getting involved with these types of businesses. Now let's talk about kind of the startup cost or initial investment for both of these. In reselling, your startup costs primarily come from purchasing the inventory that you are then going to resell. Your startup costs could also come from buying some shipping supplies to get you started, like poly mailers or thank you cards or packing tape. Maybe you buy some supplies for your photographing, whether that's like a backdrop or a lighting kit. But what I think is cool about reselling is you can honestly do it as cheaply as you want to. You could literally start reselling right now for no cost. If you just go through your house, go through your closet, find a few things that you're willing to list. You can order free shipping supplies from usps.com and have them delivered to your house. You can snap a picture on your iPhone, you can list it and boom, like your reselling business is open. It's very easy. In that sense, you have a lot of control over how much money you're spending for your initial startup costs. Cause you can start, like I said, pretty much for free and then slowly build it up over time. Or if you have some money up front that you would like to invest, which is what I did, that's also an option. Personally, my startup cost for Poshmark was $159.05. This went towards my first thrifting trip for my first batch of inventory. I bought some shipping supplies. I bought some photographing supplies. I bought like printer ink and printer paper for my labels. And I actually went back through my spreadsheets and it took me 20 one days and I had to sell 11 items to make all of that initial investment back. If you're gonna join an MLM, the startup cost can occasionally just be a fee. Like it can just be a one-time sign-up fee, but more commonly now that initial investment that you're paying, it goes towards like a starter kit or a starter pack of products. There's always gonna be some kind of startup fee at the beginning, but whether or not you get certain products in exchange for that money, it totally depends company to company. If the MLM requires you to purchase and hold your own inventory that you are then going to resell for a higher price and ship out on your own from your house, then that startup cost more often than not is going to go towards purchasing that inventory. Some MLMs that do this are LuLaRoe, Paparazzi Jewelry, Mary Kay. Like, of course, we all know about the insane startup costs for LuLaRoe, right? Thousands of dollars, but that money is going towards you purchasing a whole bunch of clothing wholesale that you are then going to resell. So in that case, I can totally see how the whole like reselling versus MLM thing seems very similar, right? You're purchasing your inventory from somewhere, you hold it in your house until you yourself can sell it and you yourself can ship it. But there's another kind of MLMs that honestly is getting more and more common these days where they do not require the distributors to hold any inventory themselves. Instead, the buyers will purchase the product through the distributor using like a special website link or maybe some kind of special code at checkout. And that allows the company to know which distributor you're purchasing through, but it doesn't require that distributor to actually ship it to you themselves. It comes from like the company's warehouse and the company ships it to you. So if your MLM does not require you to hold inventory, then usually the starter pack of products that you're buying for is just product for yourself for you to use and try. There's a ton of MLMs that do that these days, but the most popular ones are usually like Monate, Scentsy, in Young Living. Moving on to the products in both reselling versus MLMs. In reselling, you are in complete control of what you want to sell in your business. You can resell clothing, you can resell home decor, furniture, beauty products, electronics. You can find things at the thrift store and get crafty and upcycle them and resell them. Like the options are truly endless, I'm not kidding. It's amazing what people will find and be able to resell. You also have complete control over the pricing of your product. You get to decide what price you're comfortable paying when you are sourcing an item. You get to decide what profit margin you're seeking and then you get to price and list your items accordingly. Additionally, you also get to decide when and if your items go on sale, what items go on sale, how much that sale is for, how long that sale runs, just a lot more flexibility in general with the pricing part of it. In an MLM, you somewhat have control over what products you wanna sell when you're at the point of choosing an MLM. If you wanna sell workout programs, you join Beachbody. If you wanna sell essential oils, you can 
can join doTERRA or Young Living. If you want to sell supplements, you can join Plexus or Arbonne. But after that point, after you pick your company, you don't really have much of a say in what market your items are in, right? The product range is given to you and you must sell a selection of those given products. You also don't have any control over the pricing. You don't have any control over what you purchase the things for wholesale if you have to hold inventory. You don't have any control or any say over new product launches. You don't have control over when things go on sale and for how much. It's very cut and dry. Like here is your product and here is the price that you're going to sell it for. Okay, moving on to how the money is made in these two different kinds of business models. So we've already kind of touched on it, but for reselling, you purchase your inventory by typically going to the thrift store, also known as sourcing, and then you list it and you resell it for a higher price, therefore making a profit. You get to pick the platform that you like to sell on the best. I personally choose Poshmark, but there's also Facebook Marketplace, eBay, Etsy, Mercari. There's tons out there. So you have these items that you have chosen to try and resell. You pick the platform you want, you list them, and then the customers come to you. People will have an interest in something. They will search for it on the platform. They will find your listing and they will purchase it. They might not always buy it outright for the price that you're asking, but you do have the flexibility to kind of go back and forth and negotiate with the buyer and come to a price that both of you are comfortable with. In reselling, your money is kind of just made one way, right? You have a product, you sell the product. For multi-level marketing, if your MLM is one of those that holds inventory, this can look very, very similar to reselling. Like we kind of already talked about before, you purchase the inventory wholesale, you resell it for a higher price. And the money that you make comes in that difference between purchase price and selling price. If your MLM does not require you to hold inventory, then the money you're making is a percentage commission off the sales that you are able to make by directing customers to your website or using your link or using your code. But in either case, you're not supposed to be using these resale platforms that I mentioned before, like Poshmark or eBay, to sell your MLM products. It's up to you to go out there and find the customer base. This is where people get into selling to their friends and family, also known as like the hot or the warm market, the people that are closest to you. But once this warm market is kind of dried up, all of your friends and family have either bought your product or said that they're not interested, then you're forced to go to your cold market, which is where the term cold messaging comes from. That's the infamous hey hun messages that I'm sure we've all received. In other words, it's up to you to go out there and to message strangers and to see if they're interested in buying the product that you're selling. Unlike reselling on Poshmark or eBay, there is no central platform for these products to just be listed and available for sale. So the representatives and the distributors, they must kind of be actively seeking out their new customer base and pitching the products to them in like a more typical kind of door-to-door -door salesy fashion. Which of course these days, it's not very common to see door-to-door -door sales and it's less and less common to see these like MLM parties that are hosted in person. We're really moving into like social media selling and messaging people and hosting like live Facebook sales, that kind of thing. And then not to mention that most of the money that's made in multi-level marketing does not come from the sales that an individual person can do on their own. The real money in multi-level marketing comes from recruiting and comes from building a team of people in your downline that you are also making a commission off of, which takes us into our section on recruiting. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I did post like a question box on my Instagram story and I asked how are multi-level marketing and reselling similar? and how are multi-level marketing and reselling different? Very simple, straightforward questions. The most popular answer that I got on how the two things are different is recruiting, simple as that. In reselling, there is no such thing as recruiting. Sure, if somebody signs up for Poshmark using my code, they get $10 off their first purchase, but that doesn't cost them anything to do and that doesn't cost me anything either. And it most certainly does not mean that they are now signing up to also become a reseller on the Poshmark app. That's not how that works. In fact, recruitment for reselling would be really really bad for business. As a reseller, I don't want more resellers in the world. No, thank you. I love it when I go to the thrift store and I am the only reseller in there. And you know, you know what I'm talking about, okay? If you are a reseller, you know when there's another reseller an aisle over. You don't want more resellers in the thrift store. You wanna be the only one so that you can have your pick of all the good stuff that you wanna resell. But on the other hand, what's kind of cool about reselling is that everyone sort of has an upper hand in their own little way because your product is completely different. No two things are the same in a single thrift store. So you're always finding these hidden gems. And to an extent, everybody is selling these unique pieces and the market is not oversaturated. There have been countless times where I list something on Poshmark and I'm the only person that has it for sale. The thing that I'm selling is the only one on the market, at least on Poshmark, and that's good for business. Now in multi-level marketing, recruiting people is arguably way more profitable than selling product on your own. In other words, you're selling the business opportunity. I'm in this business and now I'm selling you the opportunity to also join this business, to also make money in 
the same way that I'm making money. When you recruit somebody into your MLM business, they join your downline, you put them underneath you. And some companies, they will cut you a literal check. Like here is a bonus check for recruiting that person. And now they're on your team. So you get to make a percentage commission off of the sales that they make in addition to the sales that you were making. So the math becomes super obvious, right? The more people on your team, then the more people that you're making money off of because they're all making sales and you're getting a cut of that. And most of the time you need to be recruiting people if you want to be rising in the ranks within the company itself. Ranking up in the company is really desirable because the higher you get, the more bonuses you get, the more incentives you get. This is where they start throwing in the things like the car bonus programs and the free trips, free trips, free trips and free cars in multi-level marketing is a complete fallacy. Do not believe it. Read the contracts and you'll know what I'm saying. But in order to rank up and to get all of these bonuses and incentives, you need to be recruiting and you need to be hitting these sales volume bonuses each and every month to hit and maintain ranks. The ultimate goal in multi-level marketing is to have multi-levels underneath you. Recruit as many people as you can, rank as high as you can. That's the objective. Something that is completely non-existent in the world of reselling. Okay, I wanted to talk through the results that I got from this Instagram poll that I posted, as well as some of the responses from the question boxes. I did post these things on my Poshmark Instagram account. So keep in mind that the people that are responding to these, they have like a reselling frame of mind. And I think that that's really valuable because they know what reselling entails and they know what that looks like and they know what that requires of them and what that brings them financially. And they provided a lot of really great insight on the similarities and differences to multi-level marketing. So the first thing I posted was just a poll. It just said, do you think that multi-level marketing and reselling are essentially the same thing? Yes or no? Four people said yes and 114 people said no. Then the slide after that, I posted a question box and it said, in what ways are reselling and being in an MLM the same? I'm gonna put some of the responses on the screen and their names are gonna be blocked off unless they specified to me that they were comfortable with their name being shown. So I asked about the ways that they are the same. Most people responded and said they aren't, or they're literally not the same. But there were some very interesting points that I would like to highlight here. One of them said, there's an active community with lots of tips and advice. I totally agree. I think that the reselling community is very strong, very tight knit. Multi-level marketing is absolutely the same way in that sense that you have your team, you have your group of people that you're associated with. There's lots of team calls and trainings. Everyone is sharing their strategies and their tips. So yes, I absolutely can see how they're alike in that sense. However, I'm just now thinking about this in the moment that in the reselling world, you're sharing tips and tricks kind of out of the goodness of your heart in a sense, like just for that sense of community, you're not really receiving anything out of it. But then in multi-level marketing, you're sharing those tips and tricks because you want your team to do well. And because everybody is stacked on everybody and everybody benefits from everybody's success. And that's what makes those team trainings and those team calls really essential to get everyone on the same page and make sure everyone's doing well because everybody's success relies on that. Somebody else said that they're both alike because the platform takes a commission. Yes and no. When you're reselling, you get to pick the platform that you list on. I like Poshmark. I list on Poshmark. And when I make a sale, Poshmark takes a 20% commission off of that sale. So Poshmark takes 20. I receive 80. For most MLMs, the company takes a much higher percentage commission, usually in that 50 to 80% range. So it is kind of flipped in that sense. Yes, in both cases, somebody's taking a cut of that commission, but in reselling, you get 80% and in multi-level marketing, you get 20%. Approximately, obviously it depends on the company. Another person said they're not the same, but I get MLM-y vibes from the term a six-figure reseller. And somebody else said something similar. They said, it feels like people in the reselling industry are always trying to sell you something, trying to sell you courses and worksheets and info you need to get started. That is so interesting. And I'm happy that somebody brought that up. There absolutely is kind of this corner of the reselling community that markets themselves as being like the gurus, right? The ones with all the knowledge and they have all these courses or eBooks or like training sessions that they charge you for. They market themselves as like the six figure resellers. And that term, it does kind of bother me a little bit. I don't know, I'm like kind of feeling a little uncomfortable because I've never talked about this on my channel before, but I do have an opinion on the people who kind of try and sell all of this Poshmark and reselling knowledge. I am of the opinion that anything you wanna know about reselling and Poshmark, you can find on the internet for free. And I don't claim to know it all by any means, but on my channel, there's a playlist of 44 Poshmark videos that you can access for free. That costs you nothing. There are endless numbers of Instagram accounts that you can follow with people sharing tips and tricks all day long for free. There's blog posts and Reddit threads. Like there's so much out there for you that it does kind of rub me the wrong way when some of the bigger resellers, they talk about how like they're the most successful and they know all the answers and you need to pay for their course if you also want to be successful. It does have that slight undertone of that kind of like 
preying on people's vulnerabilities and preying on people who are new to it and they might not know it all yet. And if they just buy your $100 course, then they'll have all the answers too. They will be enlightened too and they can make six figures too. So yeah, that does kind of rub me the wrong way and it does give me kind of like MLM vibes in that sense. And that term six figure reseller is extremely misleading in the same way that MLM reps are typically very misleading with their claims too. Six figures, okay, $100,000 at the minimum. How long did it take you to make that much money? Is that your profit or is that your sales? Is that taking out the cost of taxes? Are you making six figures each and every year with reselling? Or is that how much that you have made in the course of your seven year business? So I totally get that. Like the six figure reseller versus the six figure earner in the MLMs, like they're very similar in that sense. They're meant to portray this image of like, I'm so successful, come follow me and I will give you all the resources and all of the knowledge that you need. And then the next question box was just simply, how is multi-level marketing different from reselling? 99% of the answers had to do with recruiting, but there were a couple in there that said, with reselling, it's actually your business, it's your own brand and time. With an MLM, you're still working for someone else who is known as your upline. Absolutely, if you have a reselling business, it's just you. Unless of course you get big enough to the point where you're like hiring employees to do like the shipping for you or something. Like your successes and your failures, they are dependent on you and you alone because you have 100% control over every single aspect. What you're selling, where you're selling it, how much you're selling it for, how it's shipping, how you communicate with your customers. It all falls on you. You don't report to anybody. You don't have an upline. You don't have a downline and nobody is around you taking a cut of your product sales. And the last response that I wanna highlight, this person says, you don't have to sell a certain amount of inventory to maintain your status. Yes, yes, yes. I mentioned it briefly before, but in multi-level marketing, if you want to maintain your rank or hit a higher rank, there are certain goals you have to hit. There are certain volumes of sales you have to meet. And that clock resets on the first of every month. If you don't hit these goals and you don't hit these quotas, you're quite literally being demoted in the company. You fall lower and lower in the pyramid. However, in reselling, you're just hitting the goals that you set out for yourself. You're not in competition with anybody. If you don't hit the goals that you've set for yourself, who cares? That might help inform how you wanna change your business practices for the next month so that you can meet your goals, but you're not going to be losing anything. You're not going to be deemed any less successful of a reseller just because you didn't hit the goals that you set for yourself that month. So a quick recap, my final thoughts. Reselling has everything to do with selling a desirable product. You're not going to make sales and you're not going to make a profit if people aren't actively seeking out the things that you are selling. Your success is not reliant upon anybody else and you are in complete control over the product, the pricing, the branding, and the marketing. Multi-level marketing has everything to do with recruiting people and selling an opportunity. The products are very much a secondary thing and you're not gonna make the good money if you don't have a team of people below you. Your success is directly reliant upon the people in your team and you have no control over the product, the pricing, the branding, or the marketing. So those are my final thoughts. I think that they are similar in some ways, but extremely different in others. I hope this video was informative. I hope it helped clear up any confusion. I would love, love, love to hear your thoughts down below. I think comparing and contrasting these two things is very fascinating. So if you came up with any other similarities or differences, please leave them down below. I would love to see. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you and I will see you in my next one real soon.